And now back to Just Energy Radio with Dr. Rita Louise. Hello and welcome back to Just Energy Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Louise, and thank you all for tuning into the second hour of the show. Don't forget, Just Energy Radio is brought to you by SoulHealer.com and the Institute of Applied Energetics, where you can learn to become a medical intuitive, intuitive counselor, or energy medicine practitioner, all from the comfort of your own home. So if you're learning, looking to start a new career, check out www.AppliedEnergeticsInstitute.com. <clears throat> so we've been talking to Deborah Clement about... Uh, the year ahead, 2014, her website is anchoredinastrology.com, and we're going to be shifting focus from more the personal to national and international topics. And so, Deborah, my number one <laughs> thing that I want to pick your mm-hmm. brain about sure. is Obamacare. And I have to tell you this, I was mm-hmm. somebody was talking to me about Obamacare the other day, and I said, well... I, I thought you sign up, you know, like at, like now, like this is when you sign up for Obamacare if you're going to sign up or whatever. Because you know, I don't watch the news, I don't pay attention to any of that. They go, "Oh no, you're already supposed to be signed up." I'm like, "Well, where did that memo come from?" You know, the IRS can send you stuff, and all these political people can send you stuff. How come our government can't send us information about Obamacare? What's with that? Is it well, a secret? All right, I'm shutting up. No. I'm off my little soapbox. <laughs> well, well, the thing about the um, – I'm, I know they hate when they, um, they, the government doesn't want to call it Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act. But the thing about the Affordable Health Care Act, which does have its own chart, by the way, is that you know when it – was enacted and it was treated like, and, I, and I, this is just my own opinion, to me it was like such a joke. It was like, oh, we've got to pass it so we can read and see what's in it. And you know, when you have something of this magnitude – you know, and it was really rushed through. This was something that, you know, um, the president came into office, basically gave a deadline, said, you know, I want this done. And so this huge thing got, you know, what is it, 1,100 pages or whatever it was, um, got was passed and really nobody read it. And eventually, I have to tell you, when they had it, it's on, you know, it was online. And I actually read it because remember, I'm, I've always said this, I'm also an attorney. So like I'm used to reading this dry crap, you know, <laughs> the, I decided, and, and so I had gone through it. And so I had, a, so I really had a very good understanding um, of, of what was in it. And I thought, my God, when people find out they're going to really be, um, some are going to be pissed, some are going to be disappointed. And so as far as the enrollment goes, when it started, the, when it started October 1st, first of all, this is, I have to say, this is an administration that you know, there's no question that they never consult in astrology because they've done so many things under Mercury retrograde. And when did the enrollment start? When did they open up their website? Mercury was retrograde last year. So it just, it was a, it was, it was a complete mess. So it was, certainly wasn't a surprise to, I'm sure, any of the astrologers. And so in terms of where it is now, yeah, if you wanted, if you don't want to pay the penalty, Right, which they call a tax, um, the penalty. You had to be enrolled by the end of 2013. Though I think you can still enroll through March or something. I thought I read something there. I might be wrong, but you had to be enrolled, yeah, by the end of the year. But I do know this: um, New York State has its own website, and people have registered, and people have signed up, and people have enrolled, but they are not covered yet because they haven't got they have you're not covered till you pay your bill, and they haven't gotten their bills. Um, there's a lag of about three weeks of getting the information even to the insurance companies. So it's been, um, yeah, it it has not been. But a- I mean, it's the biggest mystery. It's like I don't know. I mean. I consider myself a pretty smart person, but I have like zero clue what you're supposed to do, you know, and I'm not asking you for advice, but it's like, really? We were supposed to be signed up? Well, where do you sign up? I mean, it's a secret. (laughs) Maybe that's why not that many people have signed up. Because well, nobody knows that they're supposed to. I think a lot of people haven't signed up. At least it's just what I've heard from people because a lot of them don't trust, didn't tr- just don't trust the website. It's kind of like, well, the penalty. What's it going to cost me? X amount of dollars. Let me see how it works first. Let me see how secure, you know, the information is going to be because that was that was a concern. And let me see how good the plans are. One of the things that have come that you know that are coming out through all this is people, of course, are enrolling. Is that 
you know, you may have doctors, and this was the thing, right, which was originally, oh, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. And it turned out, gee, that's maybe not necessarily so. Well, the other thing that I found out is that you might have, your doctor might take, you know, I don't know, X, Y, Z, um, whatever, you know, insurance plan. And that insurance plan may be on the exchange, but your doctor does not have to participate in the exchange. So you can get insurance for a plan that, you know, that he takes otherwise, but not in the exchange. It's just, it's very, it is very confusing. Um, I will certainly, I will certainly give you, I will certainly give you that. And the numbers, um, the numbers are not, uh, are not that, are not that high. So I think a lot of people, it's just very much a wait and see. What has happened though, um, and I will say astrologically that, that shows up, is that the planet Uranus, which is, again, it rules technology and the internet, has been um, contacting the planet Mercury, communications, information, in the chart of the Affordable Health Care Act. And the thing about Uranus is it's also a planet, while we like to think of it as being a brilliant planet, it's a very unstable planet. And so having this Uranus making this contact in the chart, it really, it just speaks clearly to what demonstrates what's going on here is that the site was up, the site was down, right? It worked, it didn't. And does anybody really know what's going on? And the story keeps changing. That's something else where I'm going to say the Uranus on again, off again, because they're really, it's not you. It's just you don't have the clarity. What I do feel is going to happen, and in this I'm going to go to April, when we have this, um, this what we call this cardinal, this transiting uh, square going on, is it hits um, the, this particular chart, the United States chart, as well as the Affordable Health Care Act. Now, that's when we file our income taxes is in April. And what's happening is people are starting to find out when they file their t- when they're filing the taxes, there are extra taxes actually that are connected to Obamacare that people are going to be paying. Okay, and if not this year, next year. And so that I think you're going to see a lot more um, protests. You know, people, there are still people trying to get this repealed. And, and that's something I'm asked a lot, like, is, you know, look at the chart, is it going to be repealed? You know, would I say it's going to be repealed? I, I think I have to be saying, I'd be hard pressed to say that. Do I think there are going to be major changes to it? Um, I, w- I will say yes, though I do feel it's more likely in 2015 to 2016 that there will really be a significant change to the program. I do think, though, it is going to be, um, I won't say completely overhauled, but changed dramatically. In the nation's chart, because the planet Jupiter, which we do like to think of abundance and bringing things, but it enlarges, it expands what it touches. Well, Jupiter is going to be going um, into the nation's eighth house in that chart. It was there briefly last year. Eighth house represents, um, well, we say other people's money in the treasury and the stock exchange, but it also represents uh, the nation's debt and also what we call the entitlements like Medicaid. One of the things that's happening, and it shows very clearly um, in the nation's chart, we're going to see the Medicaid uh, role is going to continue to expand. And that's connected to the Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act because when people register, if they don't make enough money, they are automatically kicked into uh, Medicaid. So it's an interesting thing. It's, and I know you were curious about what are the implications and, and really is this ever going to really work out? Um, I, I really feel there are going to be major changes to it. And I will say 15 and 16. It may not – I don't know if it's going to take a new – Maybe it'll be the new administration in 2016, but I do feel there's a major change in 2015. In October of this year, the planet Uranus is going to be in what we call a conjunction, which means it's a combined energy with an eclipse that is hitting this Affordable Health Care Act chart that I really do think is going to shake it up quite a bit. And it's also right before the midterm elections. Enrollment was delayed. It should have been October 15th. They delayed it to November 15th. And this is my opinion on the pretense of saying, oh, we'll give people another month to learn about it. I mean, who's kidding who? They're going to do it after the election, <laughs> after the election, hoping people will just, you know, go and vote again and, and, you know, and not find out any other surprises that are coming in. So I do think, yeah, I do think there are going to be major changes to it. And I think we'll start really seeing the action happening for that in 2015. But right now, there's a lot of the rumblings, but I don't see it uh, changing anywhere, certainly in the first half. I would say maybe at the end of the year, someone will really start. Uh, it'll really gain traction. 
And so I'm assuming the nation chart kind of talks about the people of the country. Yes, it does. It you know it covers everything: the people, the country, um, really every area. Our our friends, our enemies, right? And so country. when you look at that compared to the Affordable Health Care Act mm-hmm. chart. Do you see conflicts? Is that where this protesting would come up? Or are there any other kind of conflicts or places where it does work that, you know, maybe people would, you know, your interpretation that they would actually find some kind of benefit? Well, I will find one thing I found really interesting to me was that when I compare the two charts together, you know, just looking for connections, that the Affordable Health Care Act, it's Neptune, is at 27 degrees of Aquarius. And Neptune is certainly the ideal. It also rules health care, right, from you know, hospitals and things like that and pharmaceuticals. And it certainly is very, I'm going to say, idealistic. And, and here it was in Aquarius, which Aquarius actually rules socialism. It is a type of socialized medicine. It is what we call, I'm going to say conjunct, exact same sign, exact same degree, the moon in the USA's chart. Now, the moon represents the public. When I see this, to me, that the Neptune from the Obamacare conjunct the nation's moon, the public, to me, is this was the, um, I wanna, I'm going to call it a fraud. I'm going to call it a deception. I'm not saying that it's not going to work for some people or that it's a terrible, you know, plan. but the confusion, you know, if you just want to say, oh, was some people, I say, no, it was just an inadvertent, but the confusion, the deception, that Neptune rules con artists, and there it is. It's directly connected onto the uh, to the nation's moon, which is the population in the country's third house communications. Well, no so, wonder why you don't hear anything about it. So it's there, and that's what that was my point. And when I saw that, I thought, like you know, I always say this never gets old for me. And so, yeah, so you see that connection going on when you look at, and when you do, when you look at the nation's chart around those same time periods as well, in terms of the protests. And again, I'm going back to that that transiting cardinal square, you know, there's one planet in particular in the nation's chart that is targeting, and that is the country's um, Saturn. And Saturn, it happens to be in the 10th house. And what are we talking about? We said the president or the administration, okay, just the rule, the ruling, the governing, the governing body. That, it's like right in the sight. So that's what, that's why I feel in April, there's a lot going on, and I do feel that some of it's going to be, uh, if not all of it, some of it's very much going to be connected to the uh, to this act. Also, I mean, Congress just as an as an aside, only because it has to do with the IRS. Congress just left let I think it's fifty five, fifty five tax breaks expire. Now they've done this before; they let them expire, and then maybe the end of the year they they uh, bring them back and they're retroactive. And so this is being played out in the, in the uh, media right now because people are getting kind of tired of this thing. I'm doing my taxes. I can't write off the school supplies I pay for with my own money. And now then you make it retroactive. Like, you know, why, why can't we get this straight? And so that's why I, I do think we're going to hear a lot about that in April. And things well, somebody connect- was saying that with the uh, Health Care Act that you're going to get taxed for it. There were different taxes, you know, and it's funny because I was reading about that because I was trying to actually figure that out and understand that. And some of the taxes is that um, there are now there's now a tax on medical devices. It seems you, you, in the old days you did not pay taxes on I don't know pacemakers and different kinds of medical devices, and now there those are taxes. And the insurance companies I think are putting I think there's some kind of a tax that and I think because I'm not 100% sure if I understood it but there's a tax coming on from there so we're going to have these taxes coming on and again I'm going to go back to Jupiter going into the nation's 8th house taxes and it expands what it touches so that's why the tax is going down no our taxes the taxes are going up the debt our, our debt limit is that going up absolutely we're going to continue we are going to continue to spend I don't get nothing. I I don't see that, unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah, no, unfortunately, I do not see that. Um, I wish I saw that coming, you know, getting getting a handle. But it looks to me like, no, the spending is just going to is going to continue. Well, and and let's kind of keep on the national topic. Mm -hmm. Um, What about like jobs, you know, unemployment, you know, that's always kind of tied to the housing market, you know, those kind of concepts. Sure. Sure. Um, I will start with, let's start with the unemployment. Now, the numbers, I do want to say, because I mean, I've, I have checked this out. The numbers seem to be higher. Supposedly, jobs have been gained back, though um, the public still 
doesn't the uh, the polls don't seem to reflect that. I'm not really sure where the po- jobs are or who got them back. But in terms of the unemployment, okay, that's going on. The benefits right now, that's something else, have just lapsed. And now they're saying, are we going to, you know, are we going to extend them? Are we not going to extend them? I think they will. Okay, so we'll see. But again, looking at, I'm going still back to Jupiter, eighth house, unemployment benefits also the eighth house. Jupiter will get back into house number eight in the country's chart. Um, I use a Sagittarius rising chart just to be clear because there are a few different charts out there that people use. And it'll be back there by May 8th. And that's why I do feel from May 8th forward, you know, for the rest of the year, we're going to see a lot more, um, a lot more debt, a lot more, and a lot more spending. As far as the unemployment um, getting better, I don't see a tremendous, any kind of, I shouldn't say tremendous, that would probably be too much to ask for anyway. Do I see a really significant improvement? No, I, I really, I don't, to be honest, and I will hope to be wrong on that one. I'll be very happy to be wrong on that one. Um, I don't, I do not see, the real estate market I do see, I will say this, it's improved, and I do feel that the real estate market improves. Mortgages, okay, things connected to real estate um, related um, endeavors, like, again, um, whether they're real estate trusts, whether they're real, but to people taking out mortgages or um, construction loans along that line, that I do see improving. If I want to talk about an area where I see growth, I will say that I do see that coming in the housing market, that it is slowly getting better. The foreclosures slowing down, but again, the bleeding, I'm going to put it this way, the bleeding has not um, stopped yet. I do feel the end of the year, though, there is a, um, when I say a bump, like sort of a halt, uh, November, of 2014 till I say the first two weeks of December, that six-week period, that I do not think is going to be um, because of some activity from Saturn to the nation of the moon. I don't think the housing um, market, if it drops, that's the time I think it's going to, we may see a drop in it um, at that time. But actually, I do feel the housing market um, on the whole has come, come a long way from where, it's, from where it's been. It's creeping along, but it is getting better, and the industry is connected to it um, as well. So, Deborah, um, I'm going to talk for a little bit because your connection is starting to get really funky, and we're going to just call you right back, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to continue this conversation, but if you have questions, you know, about uh, the politics of what's going on in the country from an astrological point okay. of view, we're going to be covering some of the things that are happening internationally as well, some of the bigger countries that are on the uh, – the playing field here, um, you know, so if you have any questions, you know, please do post them in the chat room for me. I would really appreciate it. So is she back? I'm here. There you are. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me now, though? That's the oh, question. Oh, much better. I mean, okay. you were coming in, but your voice was getting all scratchy, and, you know, I want people to hear this. It's so. the blizzard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's see, you know, what about, I mean, we're talking, you know, you're talking about, uh, business, you know, one of the things that it seems like is happening that's kind of tied to business is that, I mean, not that this is a new statement, but it seems more, you know, that, that it's becoming even more all about me, you know, and, and about, you know, getting the big dollar and kind of screw everybody else, you know. And so have you seen kind of this increased moral decline, you know, not just in the people, but in business and the government? I, you know, what I, I do see is that I, and I'll say, you know, speaking, you know, astrologically, not just as personally, is it's almost more of a... um you know, I don't like to use the word, uh, it's fear is really what it is. I don't want to use the word desperation. People seem to be fearful, certainly, of spending money. Okay, I don't see them really putting putting it back. There is, there's a very um, clear lack of confidence in in the public. And you shows in the chart, and again, I'm going to go back to that trend. I keep talking about this transiting uh, Uranus-Pluto uh, square because it's taking aim in 2014 at the nation's uh, sun. Now, the nation's sun, on the one hand, also does always represent the president, the leader, but it's also, um, it's the heart of the country. And I'm just going to say it's really, it's the heart of the country and people are not, um, 
people are just not confident. The Uranus part is the instability. The Pluto part is a little bit of, I'm going to say, the fearfulness or a little bit of the, par- I don't want to say paranoia because there's, I think there's a good reason for it. There's this lack of trust in tomorrow of what is going, you know, what's going to happen, what, where they're going to be. Um, in terms of, I'm mentioning the mortgages and I was saying, I think we're going to see more, some growth in that. And I just also want to mention student loans because that issue has not come up yet really um and really blossomed yet but i do think in uh, 2000 and i'm going to go more to 2015 with this that's when i think we're going to see something um have to be dealt with it with the student loan problem in this nation because that's part of the problem the young people are not out there they've got these loans they're not paying them they're not out there working because they don't have jobs and that's part of I th- and that's what I think part of the fear is of how are we remember they pay our social security etc the same thing they're supposed to be signing up for Obamacare that's how they're going to pay for it and they're not so there's just a really fear of I think the instability for just and really for the nation as a whole. But the reality is is that if you're under 24 your parents have to sign for the loan so it's not even the young people anymore they got rid of that I don't know how many years ago. And you know what? People are losing their resources because the services do, they do go after you. I mean, that I do know. They will get the judgments. They will take, you know, go after the houses. They will get the liens. And, but that's something that needs to be, that has to, I think is going to have to be addressed. You know, it just seems like, you know, job creation, you know, it's like the young people aren't getting jobs, but there really aren't jobs to get, or they're getting minimum wage jobs or, you know, working retail, you know, because... <laughs> well, there's a lot of competition. You, know, you have so many people, um, especially over 40. I mean, they've been empo- unemployed for years, and you have people in their 30s. So you've got this competition, and for the employers, what the, what they're doing, at least, and I can say this here in New York, is when they're hiring young people, I mean, they're... I always say it's like they make them do pet tricks. I swear to God, how many interviews, interviews, how many projects... Um, you know, to really to get the job, and then they're hired, and they're hired without benefits. Oh, you have to work a year till you can get uh, benefits. So it's really it's it's been very very tough in that respect, financially for the country, and that's why I mentioned uh, about the debt ceiling and the spending because I do see the country for uh, 2014 really being, and I want to say, strained financially, and that's why, and it shows in the nation's chart, and it's showing in, because I don't want to use the word trickle down, but that's what it comes down to. The you know, revenue, there yeah. there has been a lot of talk about, you know, and it kind of goes into the Affordable Health Care Act and the economy um, about companies cutting back employees to only working part time so that they don't have to pay benefits and blah, 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 blah. Is there any kind of indication that that is actually going to transpire? It's been ha- well. I can say you know factually, it's already been happening. You know, but I mean, on a bigger, bigger scale. On, on, a, on a bigger scale, I think absolutely. I absolutely do. I absolutely believe it because when I'm looking at the chart, and I'm looking at the second and the eighth house of, of the chart because it's income and it's also I'm going to say it's debt, it's benefits. Again, looking at it on on the whole on the larger scale. And again, going back to, I'm going to say that that cardinal uh, Uranus, Pluto, we've got Mars involved. It's hitting that particular axis of the chart, the income, the and again, I'm going to say the debt, the benefits, the medical, all of that is being, and if they're separating aspects, when I say separating, I don't mean that the aspects are separating, but Uranus is a planet of separation. And it is hitting it with an angle that it says to me, things are being uh People are losing. They're not gaining more benefits. I think they're going to be losing more this year. Or not having any at all. Yeah. Um, and for, and for, you know, unfortunately, I'm sure there are some people who are going to benefit. And that's why I say it really does depend on our chart. But as a whole, looking at the nation, the health of the nation, so to speak, I don't see, I don't see it. Uh, I do not see. It. Yeah. Unfortunately, I really just, I do not see it. Um. How are other countries faring right now? I mean, I know that we're kind of hurting. And is this a, a United States issue or is there something, you know, that you're seeing that might be more, you know, pandemic? Well, you know, certainly in the past, the European Union, um, have, having looked at their chart, okay, as well, suffering um, along. It's not, it's certainly, it's not just us. But, excuse me, looking at... Um, 
and I just there was one chart I just did I did want to pull one chart up um, just for a moment of another oh goodness I want to pull up China's chart okay well yeah and I wanted yeah. to ask you about that because I was just someone just told me that um, they just had like you know their housing you know, bubble pop. I'm like, well, what's that word? Um, you know, and so all of their housing prices have just crashed and they're kind of not sure what to do. And that was just real recent. Yeah. And that's what I would want to talk about their chart because, you know, we talk, you know, in this country here, how, you know, we owe all this debt, you know, to China. But when you look at China's chart, because China is one of the, the nations that is also being hit really hard by this Uranus Pluto square, and again, it's all about. When I say it's all about ch- making this change, it speaks to a change for them for this year. It looks to me again, their leadership is definitely is being challenged. Um, the community, and it's one thing I will say, though this has been that way for quite some time. But I will say more so than in other years, the communications, whatever the, their media outlets, okay, so to speak, in China, um, there's going to be that's. I'm going to say there's going to be more censorship than there, used, than, than there was in the past. There's some kind, there's something going on. I'm just going to say that's going to come on in China. Maybe connected to, and I'm going to say it may be connected to the to the internet. I'm not really. I should have researched this. I'm not really sure how much how much the, the popul- how much it's used there. But I'm just going to say it looks to me as if there may be um, uh, maybe uh, censored or shut down or something along that line. And I'm going to say. Um, particularly around, I'm going back to around that April period, I think is an important period for them as well. But there's a, there's a number of um, the relationship as well for China, and I'm going to say with the world at large, looks as if when I say there's conflict, I don't mean that they're getting into an armed conflict, because I don't see that. I don't see that at all. But what I do see is I see them, um, I see them being much more in the spotlight especially um, next fall. And I'm going to say next fall, I'm going to say particularly around by next September, October. I feel that China, um, there's a lot, they're just, maybe I'm going to say they're flexing their muscle. I'll put it that way. Well, that's because they hold everybody's debt. Well, they do. They <laughs> and own they us can. all, right? Yeah, they do own us all. They do. <laughs> no, they do own us all. But you know, but in terms of the unrest, and you see that going on, um, the Ukraine, just as only because that's a that's a fairly recent example of what's going on. You've had all these protests in the Ukraine, and they they toppled um, they toppled was it Lenin's Lenin statue? Yeah, Lenin. And you've got them out in the streets because they, and they're protesting against um, any influence from Putin. And again, when you look at the chart, what do you see the influence of? It's the same theme of Uranus and Pluto. And that's why I say, we, we always say the clash of the titans, but what's happening in the Ukraine is there is a transformation going on, and I'm going to say here, courtesy of Pluto. And what's at the, the heart of it? The planet that's being hit in their case is Neptune, and it really speaks to their ideals and their vision. They don't like the path that they are being, um, where they feel they're being led as, as we speak at this particular time. And so we're going to see, and you're going to see the continued protests going on there as well. We're all falling apart. Um, it is a, it's a cycle. It's a cycle in history, and that's why I said when you go back to around the 1930s, and when you think of the state of the world back then, right prior to you know to World War II, what was going on? Country, you know, who was breaking down? Who was being built up? And it's a very similar energy. Well, are there any places being built up? Because it seems like you know the European Union not doing so good. Us not doing so good. You know, now with throwing China under the bus, you know. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody that you're seeing that is actually benefiting from what's going on? That's really thriving. Um, I'm just anyone on my list. I'm going to say no. I'm just looking through. I'm just throwing through. I'm looking through my list of countries that I have up here. You know, in a different sense. I'm on, I if you don't mind, I just want to bring up Japan for a moment. Okay, different sense because Japan, um, totally different. They have the issue um, at Fukushima. Right, that nuclear reactor. Right. Okay. So, and that's something I wanted to just talk about because, in fact, because I was just reading the other day or today that there were these new fresh plumes of this mysterious steam. And last year they did something; they were trying to put some um, something in the earth to keep the uh, to keep the radiation from going. I think into the into the water. And that's something I want to say for Japan for 2014. I do feel there is a strong potential for a really serious, and I'm going to use the word contamination, for them with the water, with the oceans. 
and I would say I would go to April and I'd go to October. But I do feel that that's a, there's a really serious um, there's a serious threat there to the to the health and uh, well being, not just of their area, but the just the the ocean. I mean, it gets carried out. But that's everybody. Yeah, that no, that's why if it goes out, and I do, I, I just feel, I don't know that we, we know everything that's going on. I don't feel that we do, but I am going to say I do feel that um, it's something that really should be watched carefully because I do feel that that's a serious threat. <laughs> scary, scary. I mean, because, well, I'm not even going to get into that whole, my thoughts on the, you know, but they just keep saying, oh, it's all contained and there's not anything going on, but... I, you know, it just seems like that's a big lie. It, yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but that's exactly how it, that's how it seems to me, you know, looking, looking from the chart. The other thing I do want to say, but to go back to, to the U.S., and this actually does sort of affect this world because we had, of course, in 2013, right, um, Edward Snowden. Right and the and the NSA right the spying scandal and that turned out and every and the other leaders the German Chancellor was upset we were spying on her you know etc and that's something too that I want to say about the Uranus Pluto square that's part of this theme because if you're thinking about that Pluto and Capricorn that government authority the negative side um, of Pluto is corruption it's abuse of power. And it is connected, you know, to, to espionage. So the question is, so we've got this, again, there's Uranus sort of at bat challenging it because Uranus is about freedom. It is about liberation and saying, really, is is this necessary? You know, Pluto is like, of course, I have to protect, right, from terrorists or whatever. And that's why we've got this challenge going on. But this is something that came up because Edward Snowden, depending on who you speak to, right, some people just feel, my God, this guy's like a criminal. He's a uh, treason. He's treason. Catch him, throw him, you know, lock away the key. And others look at him very much, um, very Promethean, very Uranian, that this is really more of a hero, right? That he was a whistleblower and he did what was right. Very polarizing. And that's, you know, you see it. That's why I say Uranus and Pluto, you tend to see uh, play out much more in the headlines, in the in the mundane world, in the nations, than you do um, in, the, uh, in the natal chart, unless it's really really hitting a personal a personal planet but the theme for the united states and for anyone that i think that the country really has to be aware of is this theme and i always i repeat this on on facebook all the time pluto and capricorn is dictatorial and people right now i mean we're on all of us everyone wants to earn a living who's worried about their benefits who's worried about keeping their house right and when you're in that kind of a mode of a survival mode, you're not always paying attention to everything um, that's really going on because you don't have the time. Your focus is, I got to put food on the table for my kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, but meanwhile, you, you have to watch your, the rights or whatever our freedoms or our liberties. You know, little by little, kind of you know, get chipped away. The exactly. drones, the drones. That's something else. And did you see that? Now, there six states have been approved that they're going to test drones for commercial. I know. For What's commercial, with that? For, for commercial purposes. Now, I had right. Read, yeah, right. I had read about Amazon about this is about a month ago that Amazon was like, um, oh, you know, we're going to try you know doing these like dropping off the little. Pa-. And I'm thinking, yeah, I just want to see a drone come and drop off a package. And so you're looking at this and saying, you know, really. Seriously, like I, I have a hard time just believing that these drones, yeah, they're just going to be used for that. The National Defense um, Authorization Act. I mean, that's another one that for not just terrorists, but even Americans, they can be detained, you know, without end. And that's well, you and, know, there's a FEMA camp like 20 miles from me. Is there? Yeah, we're in District Six. Oh, <laughs> I feel and, special. You feel special, but the um, but the NSA. I do want to say the NSA, the drones. You know, with this act, um, we've got the judges, and here's the thing too. When it comes to the NSA, we had one judge um, say this is like almost Orwellian, right? And he said, you know, it's illegal. That was what had had happened um, a while ago. The federal judge was Judge Leon, and he said, you know what? It's um, it's 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 almost or- Orwellian and it's illegal, you know, um, all the cell phone and the data. Then you have someone in New York, a federal judge, who just said, no, it's legal. So ultimately, it's probably going to go to the – it's going to end up going to the Supreme Court because we've got these, you know, different opinions. But it's, a, to, it's an interesting um, – interesting is a nice way to put it, but it can almost be a frightening thing. Um, there's something else about the iPhone out there that there's this allegation that the government has access or can easily get access to information through the iPhones. You have to wonder. 
So this is something that I just think these things are going on. They kind of get our attention, but they also escape our attention because the country is very much um, tied up, many people in, I'm going to say, survival, survival mode. Mm-hmm. So one thing that's exciting that um, you might know some information on is that China just landed a rover on the moon. Yes, yes. You know, and then the first thing everybody started asking, yeah, but did they find any, like, a- ancient alien uh, structures and stuff? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something. And how forthcoming are they going to be if they do? You know, it's, it was interesting because they um, because they landed the rover on the moon, and then I read some article where they said, "Oh, the U.S. we're too busy like looking for Mars, you know, going to Mars as opposed to the moon." But they did land the rover, and I want to say astrologically, Uranus, among the other things that it that it rules, is. Um, Air travel and space travel and space exploration, that's Uranian because it's technology and it's progressive. And so at the time that they landed the rover, the planet Uranus was actually um, aspecting their natal their natal sun, which is sort of the heart of the nation. So it was interesting that you had this activity from Uranus when they landed it. Supposedly, they're having another um, – they're talking about doing another one in 2017 – and I mean that's still quite, of course, quite a way off. But I will say if they to, if they do go for it in 2017, I will just say from where Jupiter is going to be in their chart, I think it could actually whatever their goal is, I think they could probably be. It'll be very big, and I think they they may do uh, be quite successful with it. But yes, the rover that was that was interesting because it's been how but 1972, right? Was the last time we moved, we, when somebody was at the moon, I think. Well, and I heard that this rover is big, you yeah. know, not this little teeny thing nope. that goes, you know, 10 feet a day, but that this thing can actually cover some territory. They do not, you know, and and when you look at China's chart, they have um, Mars and Pluto together. Again, we call this conjunction in Leo, but it's in house number eight. And house number eight is a, it's under the radar. It's a secretive house. It's actually the Scorpio house. And so they do, they keep things very quiet it's sort of like this you know they just do what they do when it's a need to know basis you find out when i guess it hits the newspaper but i will say again but if they do do it in a couple of years yeah it's it's definitely gonna if this is big that's going to be bigger i just think it's exciting and i'm hoping that they're going to be nice and share you know what they find because i don't trust our government that they <laughs> shared anything you know you hear so many allegations about um you know, we really didn't land on the moon and the pictures are faked and why aren't there any stars in the sky? You know, you hear all of this stuff. So it'd be really interesting to see what comes out from China to compare it to what we've been given. Well, I tend to think if there's anything they could do that might embarrass us, I think it might come out. (laughs) (laughs) Not to be mean-spirited towards China, but we're not, you know, yeah, we're, we're not, you know, we're not BFFs forever, um, at least certainly at, at this point. But not. I, yeah, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. So let's see who, what else is going on. In uh, the what world? about in like the Middle East area? Oh, you know, there's there's yeah. just been so much in 2013 with you know conflict and revolution. How does 2014 seem for that area? I have to say it's more of the same. I have I, I and I and I wish I could say something different, but it's just it's more it is more of the same. Um Syria, you know, looking at looking at Syria, let's say just as an example, um and there are a couple of different charts for Syria. But again, when you look at the charts and you see what's going on, there's definitely um we see this transformation going on and certainly we have We've had protests going on on there. Where how where direction is the government going in going to? But overall, for 2014, it's still a rough. Um, I'm going to say it's a rough ride. It's a rough ride for them. It's a lot of. Um, I do feel there's still going to be quite a bit of violence there. And you know, and again, this is the times I always say yes. I hope I'm wrong, but it it looks to me, and again, in terms of the time frame, I'm going to April. I'm going to October. They're just very volatile times. December could be a little rough too, but really, to me, April and October um, of 2014 are the rough times. April is a time I don't. A client of mine said was going to um, travel 
to that area and said, you know, what do you think? I had heard an astrologer say that it's not that good a time. And I said, you know, I, I'd love to say go, but I would not travel. Like if I didn't have to travel overseas at that time, certain areas, I think I would prefer to stay closer to home. I think it's just going to be a, um, maybe it'll be weather. You know, maybe it's not going to be something, you know, uh, violent in terms of terrorism. Maybe it'll be something weather, but I would not, uh, I think April, April can be a very, maybe a very rough month. Well, I'll just remember to stay home. <laughs> stay home in April. Do something. Yeah, right. Do something fun in April. Okay, so I'm looking at. Oh, we still got plenty of time. Any other countries? I mean, because well, you know, you're talking about all of this stuff going on in April. So are you talking about it? You know, just because there just seems to be a lot of tension in the chart and a lot of things going on. In the chart wise, that leads you to believe that something's going to happen, but there's not yep. really clarity on what it is that's going to happen. It's twofold. One is just the energy itself in April, just being in the heavens in itself is a volatile energy that, if nothing, if it wasn't contacting really uh, the nation's charts, I would say, you know what? Um, it may just be some really intense weather, which is something you know we've experienced already with Uranus and Pluto. Mars being involved, Mars is a little bit more volatile. It's like the match, you know, so it could really set something off. And I thought I would be uh, fires, for example, it could be something like that, lightning uh, setting something off. But the fact that this particular uh, configuration is really it's like a bullseye is hitting uh, planets in these nations charts. And we have eclipses going on at the same time, which in and of itself is a, a very strong energy. That's what makes me wonder, can I pinpoint what it's going to be? Um, no, I wish I could. And if I certainly got clarity, I'll certainly let you know. Because so many different countries are being affected. It doesn't mean that's going to be something huge and collective that everyone's involved. It may just be different things going on, protests or something, you know, in several countries at one time. For the Mideast, that would kind of make sense. You think, oh, you know, something could be going on in the different Mideast states. But we are certainly, um, we're certainly being hit by it as well, um, you know, in the United States. So is China. Japan's a little bit different um, because Japan, spe- that, that, issue speaks to me differently that's more it speaks to me about the oceans the water um that's there i have i would say more clarity whereas the others i just wonder if it's more like um i hate to say death but more like you know again uh, whether it's you know it's loss of life maybe it's suicide bombers maybe it's just some kind of a, a conflict or a, you know the skirmish with the with the uh the, they have these civil wars going on but i do feel that that's um yeah that april april is a tough month and that's and so, why. And, and there's not any way to really look at it that there's a real positive spin on it. Ideally, and I will say this because I said in the very beginning that po- that these hard energies can certainly bring about really positive events. Absolutely, um, a little bit of it, of course, is you're looking at the at the prior history and prior cycles. So when we've had, if I look at this just a Uranus Pluto in the past, when it's hit some of these planets or come close to it, what has the past experience been? There have been uprisings. You know, there have been um, unfortunately there's been violence, and that's the reason why I tend to feel it is more of the same. It's not necessary. I don't see anything that speaks to me of some great breakthrough. Okay. And, and, and that was kind that, of yeah. what I was wondering, yeah. you know. Not this year. Not I, I don't see it this year. I would, And again, that's why I would say there are times I really do think, you know, I hope I'm missing something. But, um, yeah, I don't. I so do there's not, see not even, now. you know, we're going to have this conflict and through it there is going to be this regenerative, regenerative property. Maybe coming right behind it but it doesn't even sound like that i feel we're really in the we're in the thick of it right now i don't feel we're going to war i do want to say uh, let me be clear about that i do not uh feel looking at the chart that the u.s that we're sending uh that we're getting into another war that we're sending you know this massive amount of troops in or anything like that that i want to be clear about um it's a lot of i'm going to say it could be certainly a lot of uh, i want to say like a lot of posturing but i do feel that in terms of the violence i do feel it's more likely in the other countries in our country, in terms of protests, in terms of people um, rebelling against, so to speak, the government, I do think we're gonna. Yeah, I do think we're gonna see that this year, and I do think a big part of it is the Affordable Care Act. But that's not. I don't think that's the only part of it. I think it's also going to have to do, in general, with the economy. Though I like again, the numbers may be going up, but not a lot of people are not 
they may have regained some jobs, but they're, they're, they're making a very low wage. They still are not able to support themselves, really. So it's, there's that lack of confidence. The other thing about the government at, right now at this particular moment is the la- you know, when you have this much of a lack of confidence um, in, the, in the present, it's not just that, but so many people, I've seen so many different polls, and unfortunately, it, it's not they just they just don't believe what he says. And yeah. <laughs> no, and I have to be honest. Well, you know, and it's interesting because if I recall correctly, that doesn't really present in his chart. You know what? See, here's the thing. When when he was running and I remember and a lot of people have talked about what a visionary he was. And I have to tell you, I, I gave a lecture here. Um, where I live in, in a bookstore, and I talked about all the candidates. And what I said at that time was this: was vote if you think he's the best person, by all means, vote for him. But if you think you're getting something different, you're going to be disappointed. I felt that he was honestly from the chart when he got in. I felt there was an arrogance, and I really felt he'd have no problem lying, bending the truth, or justifying. So, other people looked at a, a particular uh, fig- configuration: this Mercury square, Sun, Mercury square, Neptune. It was the okay, the aspect as being this wonderful visionary. Yeah, it could have been a visionary, could also be a fraud. I just feel as time went on and I watched and I and I listened. Um, and as I always I joke and I say, you know, I, I remember the sound bites. Like I watched, I listened, I heard with my own, you know, with my own ears, regardless of what they might be saying now. And I have to say, I mean, so many things were said that were just completely later ignored, just, you know, or discarded and uh, promises not kept. I mean, every com- politician doesn't keep every promise. We know that. But there were just Benghazi. Okay, Benghazi. Um, I watched them with Hillary Clinton saying, oh, my God, it was because of that terrible film and they did all these apology, you know, videos. And then later on it was like, oh, no, no, you know, we didn't say that. And I'm like, what, are you kidding me? I saw that. You know, I saw that like five times. So the fact that, yeah, but then – and this is a big lack of faith, um, you know, in the, in the nation and people who really supported him. That seems to be that seems to be the complaint according to the polls. So when I looked at the chart, no, it quite frankly, um, when he first took office, and the first thing he kept saying every campaign stop, it was like I'm going to get rid of the, those Bush, you know, those Bush tax cuts. And when he got in, he didn't do it, and they asked him, and he said, "Oh, it's got to wait. I've got to take care of health care, and it's just got to wait." And it waited, and it waited. Some got extended. Didn't surprise me at all. Well, but it doesn't sound like anything that he campaigned on. He actually did. Um, you know, no, and, and in fairness to him, I will say, you know, we've had other politicians who have certainly, you know, they do their song and dance and then they get in. And yes, there is Congress, you know, they don't do it all on their own. So I want to be fair about that. But we are in a position in terms of the country. When I look at the country's chart and I say, you know, where, where, where are some of the issues? And looking at the public and the big part of it, even though his chart's very strongly connected, I'm going to say, to this nation – there's a lack of the challenge from the country planetary uh, wise, looking at the astrology of it all. Wh- who's got the target? It, it, it's the president. The pre- it's mm-hmm. the president. That's who's being, um, whether he's really going to be held accountable or something else, but that is who the terms of the public is beginning to hold accountable. And I don't want to say turn on, but I'm, because maybe that's how he feels, but that's, yeah, the, the tide is turning. So I'm looking at the clock, and we have about five more minutes, and I want to ask about one other public figure um, that we haven't talked about yet who, you know, even though it it kind of seems behind the scenes, you know, does have a big sway on public opinion, and this is a new person, and that would be the new Pope Francis. Okay. I'm so glad you asked about him. (laughs) Because well, you know, you know, yeah. on the surface, you know, other than he reminds me of the Cracker Jack man, um, <laughs> he does, you know, looks wise. Uh-huh. Um, I remember. I don't the know. There's Jack part man. of me that thinks that he might be okay, but then he's from Brazil, and that's where all the Nazis moved. And I'm like, well, he could be a neo-Nazi, you know. And I, I just don't know. And so, what's your thoughts? You know, we have a birth chart for him, and that's why I always laugh about the Vatican. They have, you know, they deny astrology, but they have everybody's, you know, time of birth. Um, pope Francis, when I fir- when I first looked at the, at the chart when he was first, um, I can say elected pope. Uranus is at the top of his chart, which right off the bat said to me, "All right, this is going to be a polarizing figure." Okay, when Uranus is in the tenth house, it's usually people they love you or you know they hate you. It's usually one or the other. And the thing about his chart is. The, his moon, which is the emotions, okay, and his Venus, which are values, 
very close together, again, a conjunction in a sign of Aquarius, very humanitarian, and it's in a hard angle to Uranus. And what this suggested to me from the beginning was I wondered, I thought what the, that when they elected him in the conclave, like, do they know what they're getting? That's what I was thinking in my mind because I thought he's going to be a bit of a card, so to speak. This is not going to be your typical, you know, the old, I call it the old style uh, pope or the old school pope. And what he's done, and it certainly has lived up to his chart because he's, the statements that he's made, which have um, not sat well with a lot of more of the conservative, I'm going to say, uh, right, conservative population and conservative Catholics, even starting with uh, same-sex relationships. Not that he's, you know, not that he's saying they're okay, but what he's basically saying is, you know, it's not up to him. You know, I'm not God. And when did you hear a pope ever say something like that? And in his speech uh, he gave for the New Year was very much about, you know, we have to embrace each other's differences. We're all God's children. Totally, totally different than any other, you know, dogma that's ever come out of the Catholic Church, and I, you know, that I can remember. And so it seems to be, and again, I'm and looking at the chart. If I were looking ahead, I do feel he is going. Um, I think the travel, I think he's going to be, in about two years from now, I think he'll really be globetrotting. But for right now, in the coming year, particularly 2014, I do feel he is going to at least um, make changes, certainly attempt to make the changes. I mean, he's the Pope, right? He should be able to do it. But in terms of. He doesn't of- even have to, like, get approval. Yeah, because he's a pope, so he can do what he wants. But I do feel it's very much about um, about a tra- transforming. Okay, again, it's a transformation with the church. Is he going to change it like you know radically? If he, no, there's sort of the principles are the principles. But I do believe um, it's a much. I feel like he's trying to be a much more. I'm going to say approachable pope, a much more humanitarian pope, and I don't feel it's as narrow. And so I, I think he's actually, um, I was like, he's one to watch in 2014. I do think um, he's going to make a lot of cardinals or a lot of the, um, more conservative folk. Um, I don't know what to kind of want to pull their hair out, to be honest with you, in 2014. But I do think he is going to, his goal is going to be to bring change to the church, to transform it. In some respect, I think he is trying to get more in touch with, I'm going to say, the modern times. Mm-hmm. And and I agree with you. You know, I think that a lot of people have shied away from the Catholic Church because they haven't changed, you know, and they're not keeping up with what people want or where people's values are, you know. And so to have somebody come in and address those issues versus ignore those issues um, would make it where people that are, you know, I mean, I live in Texas. If you go in the phone book and look up church, just like Baptist churches take up five pages. You get to the Catholic church area, it's half of a column. Period. (laughs) And 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 I'm I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. You know, and I think they've lost, and I'm going to say a lot of market share. And they're looking to recover some. No, and it was a big thing, seriously, to have a Pope, because he may not be, not to say he's embracing it or he's condoning it, but not to be, come across as judgmental. And and really to come and say, who am I to judge? Well, you know, really, you're the the Pope, right? You know, you're supposed to be Peter here on earth or something, you know, God on earth. And yeah, so it's a very, um, and he seems to not just talk the talk. I mean, he seems to walk the, to walk the walk. He's so far, as far as all the, I call the luxuries, right? You know, of the Vatican, because they, very luxurious there. Seems to came from you know humble background. Seems to still be like I say, um, you know, living his life that way. But yeah, very, very interesting. Very, and I'm going to say, very Aquarian flavor to him. Very. Deborah, um, I don't mean to interrupt, okay. but we need to go. Okay. But I love talking to you, and this well, is so interesting. You. It was great. Thank you so much for having me on this year. Well, thank you for thank you for coming on because I love you and you know you know you just lay stuff out just so easy to understand and I think that that makes it easy for the listeners to go oh okay oh okay so <laughs> well thank you listen happy healthy prosperous and so if people per- want to contact you because they'd like for you to do some kind of a chart for them what's the best way to get a hold of you. My website is anchoredinastrology.com or deborahclementastrologer.com. Either one will get you to the same place. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody watch out for April. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Bye, Deborah. Bye.
And so that was Deborah Clement. Her website is anchoredinastrology.com. And next week, we're going to have our good friend Larry Flaxman coming on, talking about the invisible grid of multidimensional existence. And in the second hour, Reverend Michael Carter talking about extraterrestrials in the Bible. And so until next week, I'm Dr. Rita Louise. This is Just Energy Radio. Be blessed. Join host Dr. Rita Louise each week at this time for Just Energy Radio.